Good evening church, good evening brethren. Magandang gabi po sa bawat sa po sa atin. Welcome to Bergen Bible Baptist Church in our first prayer meeting of this month of February, the love month. Amen. So praise the Lord for giving us this wonderful time and last Sunday we had a great time celebrating of God's uh, goodness for about 33 years. Amen. Of the existence of this church. So we are glad that you are here. And welcome once again to our brethren here in the U.S. and also for our brethren who are in the abroad, in the Philippines. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome po kayo sa ating pong pananambahan ngayong pong gabi. So as we start our prayer meeting, may I request our audience here to please stand as we sing these wonderful songs. Let's sing, Tell It to Jesus. Tell It to Jesus 237. 237 tell it to Jesus on the first now are you weary are you heavy hearted tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus are you grieving over joys departed tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus Tell it to Jesus, He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the grinding clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He's a friend that will know. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. The last. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend. That's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you glad that we can tell all things to the Lord Jesus Christ? We have to cast our cares to Him, for He carried for us. So let's sing another psalm. Why worry when you can pray? Okay, why worry when you can pray? And we have a medley here. With, I just keep trusting my Lord. And after this, I would like to request Brother Henry to open us in a word of prayer. Okay, on the first now. Why worry when you can pray? Trust Jesus, He's there always. Be careful then for nothing. God's promise fully trusting. While worry, 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 worry. When you can pray on the second. Why worry? When you can pray, trust Jesus. He'll be your stay. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Lean fully on his promise. Why worry, 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 worry. When you can pray. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk alone. I just keep trusting my Lord and He gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. a faithful friend, such a faithful friend, 
I can count on Him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never. my Lord on the narrow way I just keep trusting my Lord as He leads each day though the road is weary at times and I'm sad and blue I just keep trusting my Lord he will see me through. It's the faithful guy, such a faithful guy. He's always there, walking by my side. Though the road is weary at times, and I'm sad and blue. I just keep trusting my Lord, He will see me through. Amen. Did you enjoy the songs? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So Brother Henry, please come and pray. Thank you. Okay, let us go ahead. Let us pray. Lord God, once again, we just want to praise you and we just want to thank you, Lord, for tonight that you could be here once again to listen and hear and learn from your word uh, just tonight, Lord. And please be with your servant tonight, Brother Robert. Please use him mightily and and give him the word that you want him to say, Lord. And just guide him, Lord, and just give him the knowledge that he needs, Lord, to expound your word tonight. And and well, once again, Lord, please forgive us once again for His shortcoming. And we just want to commit everything to you tonight, Lord. And we just want to thank you. And we just want to say we love you because you first love us. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for that a wonderful prayer. Um, thank you, Brother Henry. You may now be seated in our audience here. And if you're standing at your home, you can now take your seat amen so let's sing another song not my will but thine lord not my will but thine lord para mag special number na tayo sa awit na to okay so let's sing this song from our hearts and the first say when jesus christ my savior prepare for calvary's hill he went into the garden and saw the Father's will. I read about his anguish and feel his sorrow there. I see him humbly kneeling and listen to his prayer. But thine, Lord, lead me to Calvary. Make my life a living sacrifice, crucified for thee. the second. My Lord became a servant, a man of lowly bird he laid aside his glory to dwell with sons of earth but now is exalted let every tongue proclaim and someday all will praise him and man Magnify His name, not my will, but.
not thine Lord lead me to Calvary make my life a living sand with Christ crucified for thee on the last now Lord Jesus I surrender my will shall be thine own I lay aside ambition and bow before thy throne I'll give myself for others as you die for me Lord send me forth with power to live my life for thee not my will but thine Lord lead me to Calvary make my life a living sacrifice hope that you are blessed you've been blessed by the message of the song not my will but thine lord all right so thank you very much for wonderful singing tonight and thank the lord for our um, it for tonight sister kate lamson amen and thank you very much for the talent that god has given to our young people all right so we have our praises and prayer requests and if you want to send um, your comments or even your prayer requests or praises just let us know we have our comment section here in our page and also you can contact pastor abel for that okay so let's have our praises first last sunday we had a wonderful time successful celebration of our 33rd church anniversary and praise and thank the lord for his goodness for 33 years and praise God that God has given us the, you know, the grace for His faithfulness and His goodness. And thank the Lord for um, the one who started this ministry. Okay, um, thank the Lord for the ministry and the life of Pastor Max and Madam Josie. Okay, for their uh, love to our Lord and praise the Lord for that. And also for the pastors and pastoral staffs and all of the members of our church so happy happy church anniversary once again amen ang bilis no parang dumaan lang no and ngayon nasa february na tayo and also uh, praise the lord for this um, god's safety and protection to all from snowstorm uh, and i don't know if you have um, body ache right now kakashabel ayun yung ating speaker meron daw body ache okay we had a lot of snow <laughs> And truly, um, nakakabigla, no? Pag wala kang exercise, mabibigla ka. <laughs> Siya shabel. Sakit ng katawan. Okay? Kailangan ng alaksan. <laughs> Pang paalis ng sakit ng katawan. Pero thank the Lord for God's safety to all of us and His protection. So, let's greet our celebrants for this um, it's a typo. I believe it's typo. Okay, we have February 6 and February 9. All right? So, sorry about that. So, happy, happy birthday to Sister Cora on Saturday. Amen? Happy birthday. And also, our beloved senior pastor, his birthday on February 9. Tatanda na naman daw. Okay? And also, uh, uh, Nanay Carmen, okay? Uh, Mother-in-law of Pastor Gideon in the Philippines celebrating her 75th. 75th uh, birthday on February 9 also, same as Pastor Sam, okay? So, happy, happy birthday to all the celebrants, amen? Praise the Lord and thank the Lord for your life. And also, uh, we have here our prayer request from Sister Naomi Colim. Dear pastors and brethren, uh, please pray for my niece, Marlene, tested COVID-positive on home quarantine. 
her family members are quarantined at the daycare center in our barangay. They will be having their swab test today, praying that they will they all didn't uh, get the virus and tests will come out negative. Thank you. Prayers much appreciated. God is good. Okay, so let's do, continue to pray for loved ones and pray for uh, Marilyn and uh, the family. Okay, and also from Brother Harvey Minano. Prayer request, please pray for comfort and salvation to my co-worker's uh, family. His uncle Elias just passed away due, due to COVID last Monday and the family is tested positive with mild symptoms. So let's do pray for the family and God's comfort Okay, to the family of Elias. Alright, so thank you for letting us know of that news. And also from Sister Lela Pastrana, um, liver surgery of my brother Raymir in Manila. And let's pray for that. And also another surgery operation. Uh, let's pray for Brother Christian Lamson of her office, uh, left shoulder torn ligament. Uh, there is a date uh, on February 10. Okay, so let's pray for Brother Christian for a successful surgery and also or operation and also let's do pray for NCLEX review of sister Kim Minano and sister Hazel Manalo and pray for our brethren who are looking for work and also let's continue to pray for the safe pregnancy of sister J uh, January Manalo okay so nasa request na revelation last Sunday <laughs> And praise the Lord for another uh, life. Amen. Another baby. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. And also uh, upcoming wedding of Sister Robin and Brother Gilbert. So let's do pray for um, those prayer requests. Amen. So uh, let's do uh, continue to pray for uh, these people. Um, God's healing mercy, good health, and God's probation. Sister June's um, brother, Dave Healing. Uh, Dave Healing from car accident and sister Sally's mom uh, kidney stone let's do pray for that pastor Nestor Lubugin uh, let's continue to pray and pray for his um, health and also his condition right now and also let's pray for Manny Rodriguez uh, for the strength and salvation for the family as well okay so Let's pray for Sister Luming Tolentino, good health and strength. Sister Paz Norella, complete recovery and health. Uh, our aunt, Tess Rason, uretine cancer stage 3. And also Sister Naomi Orbistondo, dialysis and her health. And let's pray for Brother Onesimo Orbistondo, Sister Emia for complete healing. And Brother Manding for strength every day. And Sister Marian Rebilla, Brother Hector De Castro. Um, Edward Cave, um, Maria Sembenko, Dr. Meyer and Mrs. Geiler, and S Sister Shirley Rowalt. Okay, so those are the lists that we need to pray for. And also, let's pray, continue to pray for USA, Philippines, and world government and national leaders, conflict in the Middle East, and peace in Israel, and our church ministries, um, virtual Bible studies, and also our prayer chain every Saturday and let's continue to pray for our unsaved loved ones, our families and friends and all of the missionaries that we are supporting in our church I thank God that God has given us God entrusted us with these missionaries let's do continue to pray for them and their ministry as well and their family and also our frontliners in our church let's do uh, continue to pray for them and their families okay so, I believe um, that's it. Oh, do we have any um, thing in our page per request? Additional? Okay. So, wala naman po, no? Alright. So, let's have a, a time of prayer. And after the song, we will close our prayer time in a word of prayer. Okay. So, let's pray.
Let us pray. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this wonderful privilege that we can pray together. Thank you, Lord, for this um, access that we have, oh Lord God, as your children, that we can come anytime, oh Lord, anywhere, oh Lord, in your presence. And thank you, Lord, that we know, Lord, that you are always open, always available, Lord God, to hear our prayers. And thank you, Lord, that we can also ask for forgiveness for the sins that we committed against you. We are humbling ourselves, oh Lord God, in your sight, um, recognizing, oh Lord, that we cannot do, uh, do um, things, oh Lord, without you, oh Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for your power. And thank you, Lord, for your um, faithfulness in our lives, O oh Lord God. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for our brethren who have prayed, O oh Lord God, for this time. I pray that you continue to bless their lives. Thank you, Lord, for their um, our willingness, O oh Lord God, to participate and to um, give, O oh Lord, their time, O oh Lord God, in worshiping you in spirit and in truth. I pray, O oh Lord, for this prayer request that you continue to um, give um, your answer, O oh Lord, uh, according to your will, according to thy power, O oh Lord. And we want to say that we are trusting you more, O oh Lord God. And help us not to worry, O oh Lord, for tomorrow. And help us to trust you more um, in, in your words, in your promises, O oh Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for this time. I pray also for the speaker and the remaining parts of our service. I pray that it will continue to give um, glory, O oh Lord God, to your precious name. Help our speaker, O oh Lord. Give him the wisdom and knowledge, O oh Lord, to preach and strength, O oh Lord, to preach thy word. And bless your people. Um, and bless us, O oh Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So thank you, church, for your prayers. And now um, I may call on Pastor Sam to come to give us some announcements. So, th so thank you very much. All right, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat sa mga kapatiran na rerito sa ating iglesia and uh, good morning sa ating mga kapatiran sa Pilipinas wherever you are. Praise God for your uh, presence and your um, attendance here tonight for our first prayer meeting for the month of February. And uh, we just praise and thank God. We still have a residual beauty here of these wonderful flowers that we have last Sunday for our 33rd church anniversary. So we thank God for the success, for the word of God that has been preached by Dr. Geiler, for all the greetings that we had from our brethren in Christ, from all, all our missionaries, even the, the baby dedication that we had after the service with baby uh, Eloise and baby Hannah. So we praise and thank God for all those wonderful blessings, for his faithfulness and his goodness in our lives for 33 years. And also, you've already seen the announcement, pray for my wife. Uh, we're expecting again for the fifth time. God is good. And uh, we just came from the uh, Obigani today. Um, the baby's 13 weeks and one, one day. So we uh, ask for your prayers. It's, it's tough for the wifey <laughs> because she's the one bearing it. Uh, we need the grace of God. And... Uh, and we thank God that the children are truly a heritage, isn't it? A gift from the Lord. So we uh, ask for your prayers for strength and uh, good health for Sister Jay. And also, um, we're going to resume our Friday virtual Bible studies. Uh, let's thank the Lord for our uh, Bible study leaders for their diligence and encouraging their Bible study members to keep on uh, participating and being a part of this wonderful uh, Bible study online, even though we are restricted by the COVID, but it will never stop us, isn't it, to fellowship with one another through God's Word. So please support this, and I know that you'll be blessed. And then the following day, we'll um, have our 46th week prayer chain, 46th week now. So, wow. And we're going to keep on doing that uh, until the Lord comes, you know, because prayer is very essential. We really need it in our lives as a church as a christian to pray with one another for one another so february the sixth saturday all right so please keep that in mind and be praying for our uh, worship services this coming sunday also so tonight our um 
First speaker for our first prayer meeting, as we always have, is the brother, <laughs> brother Robert Miguel. And uh, I, I saw his cousin guy, sa, sa FB. <laughs> so whenever I see him, like, I always remember my former classmates in FBCI, FBCA. So um, we thank God for his life. And uh, I know he's excited to preach, even though we're like chatting yesterday when we had this Nor'easter uh, we haven't had that much snow since 2016, isn't it? So uh, we've been like shoveling, you know, and, and do pray for Pastor Max. They are snowed in, in the Poconos because they have more snow there than us. And hopefully we'll be able to go there this Saturday and try to dig out his, his car or something in the driveway. But they already had some help, but of course it's really thick there. And, and of course Pastor Max is not like 30 years ago that he can handle all of that, you know, shoveling by himself. And it's a big property. So let's pray for them for the Lord's safety. But um, we thank God that God has sustained us. Uh, I, don't, I didn't hear anybody from our church folks, you know, getting into an accident or like uh, getting a heart attack because of shoveling too hard. But uh, we have significant amount of snow. But thanks be to God because our, our parking lot is a little bit cleared. So some of our folks can attend our prayer meetings tonight. So before he would come to share God's word, for our first prayer meeting, Sister Raquel, Naomi, and Pastor Abel have a special music. All right, thank you. from my 
hurts when I'm weak. I'm stronger for pa sila ng galing kumanta, no? Amen, amen. So, good evening po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan. And once again, um, boy, ninenervis ako, pero hindi ako kakanta. Uh, yun ang patakaran dito sa church. Pag ninervis ka, you will sing. But you know, I'm, I'm okay. So, uh, first of all, I would just... Uh, Congratulate, want to congratulate the church for uh, milestone that God given us. And also, uh, sabi nga nung I was watching the, uh, the uh, anniversary last Sunday, sabi ko I should have went and joined uh, the brethren over there. And also, uh, personally congratulate uh, Pastor and Dr. Sam Manalo. Amen. You know, Pastor, uh, you've been a blessing to our church, and uh, you're, uh, uh, you encourage us to uh, to preach and uh, teach the Word of God. You know, uh, I mean, uh, we've learned a, a lot of things from Pastor Sam, you know, his humbleness and um, stuff like that. Um, I heard uh, someone ask me, uh, sabi niya, how come um, Pastor... Um, this and that, he's so rich. No, maraming pera, mayaman. And then I was like, just, siguro marami siyang sinulat na libro or anything. You know, uh, sabi niya, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so blessed to our pastor, sabi niya. Uh, even though um, I actually pastors, sabi niya yan. And uh, even though na they're not rich, you know, you give them money, but they still, you know, don't want to take it. You know, sabi ko, ganyan talaga, binlas tayo ng Panginoon with the good pastors. You know, let's just continue to pray for them. You know, uh, actually, I heard yung news na yan, eh, si January is, uh, uh, sabi ko, uh, not really, I'm not sure. Uh, sure. Hindi ko narinig sa, ano, eh, sa, sa Sunday, eh. Sabi ko, okay, I'll find that um, sa Wednesday, which is, amen. All right, Pastor, keep it up, and I, I'm really praying that this is a boy. Okay, girls? <laughs> don't, again, don't go against with me, okay? I hope and pray it's a boy. Yep, uh, Pastor, I mean, Sam Manalo Jr. Okay. All right, I declare, sabi nga na. <laughs> But anyway, so, uh, yeah, thank God once again for this opportunity that I can preach and share the word of God. Oh, but before I do that, I have a joke over here. I don't know if you can... I mean, just to make you laugh, or maybe you don't laugh, you're not gonna laugh. Okay, uh, so use the word February, March, April, May in a sentence. Huh? Hola? Any sentence? COVID months. COVID months. February, March, April, May is a COVID months. Okay. All right, so here it is. Okay. Um, can February, March? No, but April, May. Tawa naman kayo. Ang hirap magpatawa. Hindi kayo tumatawa. Anyway, I, I shared this to my uh, nephews and nieces, and they called me uh, a clown. Uncle, you're such a clown, sabi sa akin. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thank God for uh, God's protection to ours, uh, storm, a snowstorm. Yeah, it's been a while, na hindi natin na nadanasan to, no? You know, um, uh, during that storm, actually, I called out Tuesday, kasi Monday, they declared na sarado ang, you know, so I called out, sabi ko, I need to clear the pathway. And me and my wife and the kids tried to clear it out, but we cannot clear it out. It's so heavy. So we go, Han, I have to call somebody, you know, uh, 
to clear out our driveways. You know, only to find out to clear out the driveways, $350. Have you go, no, no way. Ay nga, gisip ako, bagong lawn blow, lawn, uh, snow blower na yan ah. Then all of a sudden, God talked to me, said, you have a brother-in-law waiting for your help. Waiting for us, how she to help. Then I told, um, thought of Brother Reno. Good thing is uh, only a few blocks away. So uh, I only asked to, I only want to borrow his machine. But he came with the machine and he cleaned the driveway. <laughs> you know? So I go, wow, that's a lot of blessing. Kasi nga, sabi ko, masakit na yung balikat ko, yung likod ko. My wife's been applying a uh, icy hot on my back. Ay, nagsasabi na, amoy, amoy bengge ka, sabi niya sa akin. Sabi ko, pasensya na, tumatanda na eh. But you know, it helps a lot. So I thank God, I, I feel good today. Akala ko, magsisisyo na naman ako because I have this uh, uh, um, pagod and stuff like that. But so, um, let's, uh, let's go to Lord in prayer for before we start. Um, our dear God and loving Father, I pray that uh, you will guide us tonight. Uh, you'll be with us. And I pray, Father, Lord, that uh, uh, may your Holy Spirit will guide us, O oh Lord. And thank you for thy goodness and thy mercy to us. And please uh, be with us and uh, forgive us, Lord, from all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry, I have to take this out. Ang hirap pa lang huminga pag nagpipreach na may mask. Even though meron ka ng protection na ganito eh. Whew. All right, so, all right. Um, our scriptures can be found in Romans chapter 12. Let's include the 1 and 2. Okay, uh, if you may. Um, what the Bible says. Okay, paki kwan lang po, Pastor. Um, Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know, you know that uh, uh, verse already, okay? All right, dear, here's, the, here's what the Bible says. Um, Asan na ako? Pastor? <laughs> I beseech you therefore, brethren, right? I don't want to misquote it. Baka masipa ako dito sa... Okay, I got it. Okay. Uh, Romans 12. Okay, there you go. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, okay, that you present your bodies, okay, um, a living sacrifice, all acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 21 to 23, that will be our um, uh, sub subtext. Okay, so here, um, do we want to do good in our eyes or the eyes of God? Ano ba ang mas gugustuhin natin? You know, we do not get a choice, okay? We don't, we don't get to choose. It is all about God's will, not ours. You know, sometimes we, we plan a lot of things. You know, I want to do this, I want to do that. But did we consult what God's plan for us? You know, we have a lot of ups and downs in our life. And then we want, our plan is to fix it. For our, uh, to, to, do, uh, to do it for ourselves. You know, God is always waiting for us every time we encounter these things. You know, um, we've been hunting for a house for almost half a year now. And uh, I, I, there's a house that I really like. You know, and when, uh, when we got the deal and stuff, accepted the, the offers, and dami kong plano gawin sa bahay. Yung pala, and then all of a sudden, they did not give it to us. They backed out. So I was like so hurt. Sabi ko, um, sabi ko this time, hindi na ako mag-expect ng ano. And then we have a, a deal again dito sa Elmwood Park, God's willing, uh, magka-neighbor kami ni Sister Silin. Sabi ko, hindi mo na ako magpa-plano until I have the key in my hand. You know, ang hirap pala, no? no? Ang dami mong plano, and then all of a sudden, hindi, ma, hindi mangyari, no? But anyway, you know, uh, I'm, we're still praying for it. You know, Yung, yung inas namin uh, offer is exactly yun ng appraisal ng bahay. Wow. Lord, are you telling me something? But anyway, so yeah, please pray for that. And so in, uh, before I start, uh, let me just tell you this story. 
You know, in the, in the late 1900s, one of the famous gangster, okay, who was the big crime boss in Los Angeles, with close to a, uh, they called it mafia, he attended the Christian meeting in Beverly Hills. Oh boy, I want to attend the meeting here in Beverly Hills. I haven't been in California ever since I arrived here in the, in the U.S. The meeting was being led by late uh, evangelist named Billy Graham. Okay? So Graham was just starting out in evangelist, evangelism and no one had really heard of him. But they know this uh, gangster all over California. The gangster was attracted to what he heard on the meeting. Afterward, Billy and some of others uh, talked to him about salvation, but he made no commitment at that time. And a while later, a Christian friend read to him Revelation 3.20, and he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So the friend then asked the gangster if he wanted to receive the salvation, if he want to, uh, wanted the salvation, and he said, yes, I do. You know, that decision made the whole city, you know, uh, like uh, parabang naging viral siya, no? Gangster, wow, na save. You know, and the ministry of Billy Graham became known cross in the nation, but there was only one problem. Wala kang nakita ang pagbabago dito sa gangster. You know, but sabia, but he received Christ, he said. But there's no change in his life. So what's the problem here? So when his friend confronted him about it, the gangster complained and so very angry. And he was like, you never told me that I have to give up my career. You never told me that I have to give up my friends. There are Christian movie stars, there are Christian athletes, there are Christian uh, businessmen. So what's the matter being a Christian gangster? If I have to give all that up, forget about Christianity. You know, then you can count me out. He was so upset. So now, I've not, I've not met, hindi pa ako nakakita ng mga tao na that they think that God would be cool with the Christian gangsters as career choice any more than a Christian drug dealer or Christian rock star. I bet you haven't seen either one. You know, but I also bet you that you know more than a few people who think that they can be right with God while ignoring most everything. You know, most everything that God wants them to do in their life. So like this gangster, they have done demote uh, obedience to the statutes of the extra credit assignment for those who are really into who call Jesus thing. So not too many of us here are gangsters. I don't think not either one of us, none one over here are gangsters, right? You know, it's, it's hard to be in the gang, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. You know, too many of us not are gangsters here, but... The story fits in our life here. When we give our lives to Jesus, we may and will have to give something up, right? I mean, you've heard a lot of pastors and ministries, you know, na nagpunta rito, you know, to share the, their works in the Philippines. You know that they, they used to be engineer, they want to be engineer, or they used to be engineer, used to be a doctor, but they gave up all those up for the, for the, for the Lord. You know, like this gangster, you know, uh, not too many of us like us, like them. When we give up our lives to Jesus, we, we may give all something up. Putting Jesus first will cost us something. Many are not willing to let Jesus take them that deep. But the Bible says, but the Bible is full of stories of basically good people who knew God, yet did some pretty unpleasant things. You know, many of us find comforts there because many of us have found ourselves in a place far from God after having come to know Him. You know, it's, it's sad to say, you know, matagal ng Kristiyano, 
o matagal nang saved sinasabi nila but you don't see changes in their life. You know this probably why the story of the prodigal son is such a favorite. Many of us says we've been there and done that. Basta Tagalog eh galing na ako diyan. You know, papunta pauwi na ako, papunta ka pa lang pauwi na, pauwi na, uh, papunta ka pa lang pauwi na ako. Sabihin na sa iyo, bad di tayo nagkasalubong. You know, certainly good and godly people can fall into sin. You know, it's either sudden or slowly because they keep doing or they keep uh, going to the uh, wrong steps, wrong direction. You know, uh, and without a doubt, all of us struggle with sin. Right? Even the writers of the scriptures, they struggle with sin. But here's the deal. No Christian can set up a camp in the land of disobedience and stay there and defend it as a being no big deal. It is a big deal, brethren. It is wrong. The Apostle John put it this way. The Bible says in 1 John 5, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and him is no darkness at all. In verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So what is walking in darkness? What is walking in darkness? You know, it is impossible to do good things and still be walking in darkness. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm a gangster and killed anyone or rob a bank or, or even committed gross immorality. So listen to this. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father is in heaven. So today's passage, brethren, deals with the will of God. Just what is the will of God? So what is the will of God? Lagi natin tinatanong yan. Ano ba ang will ng Panginoon sa akin? What is the will of God? According to the recent survey, 70% of adult American Christian, you know, believe that there are moral or ethical absolute that applies to everyone. In other words, most of Christian adults have been poisoned by the drug of moral philosophical doctrine. So most Christians have joined the non-Christian culture and believe we set our own standards. In essence, this survey reveals that 70% of adult American Christians have decided that God is not acceptable, I mean, is not capable or worthy of establishing guidelines for living. So in similar survey of 20% of adult American Christians said that living a life according to God's will is the single most important thing in their life. So in the other flip side of the coin, adult American Christians are telling God to take a number. They're telling God to take a number. Yet many of these people are quick to say that do good works. They are working for God so Jesus would be pleased. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have uh, cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful work? So this is the statement of, uh, that Judas could make. Did not Judas go out with 70 and preach the gospel, heal the sick, and cast out demons? In other words, a man may be able to do great things and great results, but that says absolutely nothing about his salvation. You know, we need to hear this. Uh, uh, when there is a thousand who are claiming that it's Christ, Christ, they have supernatural powers. People say they have heard of some freaky things going and will commit and will comment that it's okay because the individual use Jesus' name every time he does it. You know, they said, oh, I will do good every time I say the word of God. You know, using the name of Jesus does not prove anything. Even because one of the commandments says, thou shalt not use the name of the Lord in thy God in vain. So these people 
had been active in the service of God. They had done everything but Lord's will. You know, they will do everything except God's will. And this is the critical thing to do. You know, you know it is worth pointing out here that we cannot over, ever know what is absolutely certain, the, spirit, the spiritual state of individual of their activity. So in context, Jesus said in the preceding verses that you can tell a bad tree from the fruit they produce. You know, yet here, just because someone is doing good works, you know, good works in their eyes, but bad in God's eyes, we believe them to be saved. You know, yet here, just because someone is doing good works, you know, that doesn't mean they are saved. And notice too, these are, these are the uh, non-Christian acts Jesus is specifically mentioning. Can a non-saved person do miracles? Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 24, For there shall rise false Christ and false prophet and shew great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And this is what Jesus says also in Matthew uh, 7, verse 23. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, yet that work iniquity. So in other words, in, uh, in other Bible version, the word iniquity, they use lawlessness. Lawlessness means disorder, anarchy, outlaw, illegality. Wow, what are words? You know, what do you mean? I practice lawlessness. I obey the speed limit. You know, I pay my taxes. Oh, it's tax season again, okay? Uh, I just called my, uh, ano, last night, sabi ko, makikita na naman tayo. Sabi ko, ano ba ang procedure mo ngayon? Sabi niya, wala mo na akong ta- pinapapasok sa bahay ko. Eh. Sabi niya, just drop it off in the mailbox. Okay, no big deal. No, tax season na naman, di ba? So, lawlessness is the biblical context means basically the rejection of the law of God. Willingfully ignoring the commands of Jesus. Disregard for the guidance of scripture. Wow. You can teach the most amazing Sunday school, you know, but you have this lawlessness, what they call it. Now, you give 20% of your income to the church, and you are a church every time the door is open, but if you live an immoral, immoral lifestyle, cheat on your taxes, lie to your neighbor, Jesus says you are practicing lawlessness. We don't get to pick the commands we like and disregard the rest. Pag sinabi natin, oh, ayoko to, mas gusto ko yung gawin ito, kasi mas madali. Who then gets the other, the kingdom of heaven? You know, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, the Bible says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So knowing and doing the will of God, this is not earning our salvation. This is showing our salvation. Paul would say in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It is out of love and our obedience to Jesus. And Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So, how do we know God's commandments? How do we know God's commandments? In Romans 12, verse 2, right? And that be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, a very important little word in this verse, the word that. Take note of that. That. Okay, take note of that, that. Okay, the Greek word is eis, preposition of purpose. The other biblical translation, they use so that. We renew our mind in other, that, so that. Okay, they use all those words. So we may prove 
so that we may prove, so that the rightly discern and determine that just what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this is not, this is not God's will, but rather God's will is good. It's God's will acceptable or pleasing to God, and God's will is perfect and complete. And it is that, and it's that word will we must do. Okay, in God's will, we have to do this. But part of God's will is knowing God's will. How do we do that? In Romans, okay, in our verse 12, verse 2, be not conformed to this world. That's what it says. We can do God's will, but if we not conform to this world. The previous verse says that we are not be living sacrifice to God and a proper sacrifice to God is to be holy. You know, you know, acceptable as unto God without any blemish. So we are not to be conformed to this world or blemished by the world. In the Greek word, world is ion or age, okay? Hindi yung tumatanda, okay? Meaning the current world old order, the present culture. So age carries with its sense of the belief, the philosophies, the method and the strategies of the fallen world in which we live. Okay, it's not just a uh, the world that is people in their fallen state. It is the worldview and practices that gain from the fallen state that define the age in which humans live at any time of history. So the problem nowadays, you know, is not that Christians are living in our current culture. The problem is that there are so many of current culture living in a Christian world. Kaya na nadadala tayo, no? O sumusunod tayo sa Agos, kumbaga. Right? So Jesus, by the will of God, delivered us by His blood from this present evil age. Or from this present evil world. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So if Jesus deliver us, why would we want to have any part in it? Bakit ayaw natin magkaroon ng part dito? You know, in James 4.4, 4, the Bible says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enemy of God? Gusto niyo bang maging kaaway kayo ng Panginoon? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. It's very clear in James chapter 4 verse 4. You know, you know just tell us that John tell us in his letter also in John and 1st John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17. He says here, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what is it? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passed away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God. Okay? He that doeth the, doeth the will of God abideth forever. So now, there is a word for not conforming to the world. We would say to be separate, okay? To have separated walk. This is the very definition of being holy. You know, we are called to be holy. Okay, in 1 Peter 1.15, the Bible says, But as he, he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And verse 16, it says here, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So Jesus prayed to the Father that his disciples who are in the world, but not of the world. So we are in the world, brethren, but not of the world. Jesus prayed that, you know, be kept from the evil one who is the ruler of this present age. You know, how are we to avoid indulging in the evil things, in the evil present age of our current culture? How do we avoid that? By renewing our minds. You know, by renewing our minds, but be transformed by renewing of our minds in Romans 12 too. 
So in present passage tense, pres passive tense is that Greek, we can easily uh, translate, be transformed, okay? Dito is the past tense ang ginamit niya, be transformed. But to keep, this is not only one time. This is to keep on transforming. This is not one, one thing done, you know, one time thing. It is a continuous action. So the word transform here in the Greek is where we get our word metamorphic. Okay? It means to change from one state to other. You know, to be changed from the other, from inside out, to be changed on the inside, ought to be reflect on the outside. So kung may pagbabago tayo sa ating puso, kailangan makita ng mga tao yan. You know, yes, sabihin natin, yeah, kristyano ko, but there is no change in our life. Papano natin sila mawiwin sa Panginoon? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 23, the Bible says that ye put off concerning your former, okay, former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and verse 23, and be, re, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Wow. So as our, as our mind be being renewed, we are becoming more Christ-like. Like a computer. You're like programming a computer. Ako, hindi ko alam ito, pero just, you know, magaling sa inyo sa computer. Pag merong nagdala sa inyo ng computer na na-virus, di ba? Ang gagawin ng gagawin ng um, IT dyan, no, ng programmer is it will erase everything out. Di ba? And then, we must, and he will reprogram it. You know, so us, para tayong mga computer na na-virus. So we must reprogram our minds from the things of this world to the holy things of God. So we are overwriting, okay? Overwriting all the bad datas with all that is holy, okay? So papalitan natin yan ng magagandang mga databases. So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So as we become more Christ-like, knowing the will of God will be more natural, clearly evident, and doing the will of God will become an earnest desire. Diba? Napakagandang ano to? Knowing the will of God become more an earnest desire. So there is a lot of things to digest tonight, but I'm running out of time. You know, but are you following the list of these messages? You know, the list of these uh, verses that I have given you? Being a follower of Jesus Christ, confessing you as a Christian is so much more than walking the aisle, saying a prayer and getting dunked in the baptismal pool, you know, it is a total commitment to Jesus to say, I believe in Jesus, not mer merely about him. It is to say, I fully trust all that I am and all that I have to him. Narinig nyo na ba yung, I think narinig nyo na to, baka ganun yan, yung, yung, yung manok saka yung baboy naglalakad sa daan. Have you heard this joke? All right, let, it's, it's worth to say it. One, of, one day, there's uh, two friends, the pig and the chicken, walking in the street. And they saw a sign. Um, uh, ano to yung um, magbigay ng something, contribute sa, sa mga tao to help that, the, to feed, yan, to feed the poor. Ang sabi ng chicken, uy, sabi niya, sali tayo doon, mag-commit tayo doon. Sabi ng, sabi ng baboy, ah uh -uh. not, not not so fast, brother. Ikaw, magkukumit ka just to lay egg. Pag ako nag-commit, will, they will kill me before they get some ham out of me first. Sa, sa chicken, mangingitlog lang siya para magkaroon ng ham and egg. E yung baboy, papatayin mo na bago magkaham, di ba? So, uh, matalino yung baboy. You know? Sabi niya, not so fast, my friend. They will kill me first before they get ham. And you, you will just lay an egg and just say, ah, ah. you know, I lay the egg, that's it. So, okay, narinig niyo na yan, kaya hindi kayo tumatawa eh. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not earning my way to heaven. Jesus did that on the cross. You know, how do you, how do you earn your ways to heaven? You know, not through good works. Diba? Jesus did all that to, on the cross. I am serving my Lord with all that I am. I love him that much 
I owe him that much. He deserved nothing less from me. You know, every time I think of this, what Christ has done for me, you know, personally, you know, uh, hindi ko nahihiya ako pag na nagiging uh, unfaithful ako sa Panginoon. And um, like, you know, all the things that he had done for me, it's, it's, it cannot I cannot change it. And hindi ko ma, uh, mapapalitan ng katumbas ng kano man yan. You know, in my conclusion here, you know, being a Christian is not something that we want to do things. It is the very fabric of who we are and to whom we, we belong. We are bought with a price. You know, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, it is all about Jesus. Kahit na anong ginawa mo, you know, pagtapos ng araw, it's all about Jesus. Di ba, bago matulog, you will say, thank you, Jesus, for everything that has done today, whether it is good or bad. So, have you given all to Jesus? So, living, in, living a Christian life is not always easy, di ba? You know, keeping God's commandments, discovering His will, loving your enemies can be challenging. So, paano mo mamahalin yung enemies? Diba? Kung matigas talaga ang ulo. That's very challenging. Even some of Jesus' followers found this teaching to be too difficult and decided to leave him. So his word were hard to swallow. Sometimes it is very difficult to obey God's command to stay faithful to him. You know, it is especially discouraging when you face the reality of his warning that the world will hate you for no reason and being a Christian we will have doubt, troubles in this world. In those moments, we feel like we want to give up and stay away. But then, remember what Peter realized a long time ago, that there is no better place to be than besides Jesus. You know, where you could be, where, uh, where could you go when only you, you have the word of eternal life? This world will, will pass away, but the word of God will, will, will stay forever. You know, the will, uh, the will of God will lead us to our heavenly kingdom. So I hope and pray that this uh, short message uh, will give us, you know, uh, attention to God. You know, before we do something, you know, let's ask God, is this your will for me, Lord? You know, let's ask the Lord. You know, let's put him first in our, in our, um, uh, I call this, agenda or schedule. I think I've preached on this before. You know, before we do something, let's ask God, Lord, is this really your will for me? You know, um, I mean, it's hard to, ayaw mong marinig ang sagot ng Panginoon, baka sabihin niya, no, hindi yan ang, ang will ko sa iyo. You know, that's what you want, but my will for you is different. You know, sometimes it's hard to accept it, but, you know, God's way is always right. So, um, hopefully that this short message uh, really encourages us and uh, give us uh, base, uh, basic things that uh, we can always draw in near to the, to the will of God. Okay, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, uh, we know, Father Lord, that uh, there are things that we want to do in our life. But we know, Father, your way is always uh, higher than our ways, and your thought is higher than our thoughts. We pray, Father, Lord, that help us, Lord, to obey you. Help us, Lord, to commit ourselves unto you. We know, Father, Lord, that um, we try to be strong in our own way. But we know, Father, Lord, that we cannot do anything without you. Lord, you are our life, and you love us so much, and you want us to be to abide in you forever. I pray, Father, that you will give us a strength and wisdom to obey your precious word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much once again, brethren, and good night. Stop. Amen to that. Thank you, Brother Robert, for the wonderful message tonight, for preaching and teaching God's word. May God bless you. I hope that uh, once again we were so blessed tonight. And let's not forget what we've heard and let's leave it out tomorrow. 
Uh, it reminds me of that saying, you know, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge and to do the will of God is the greatest achievement. So how can we know the will of God? Through the Bible, through the scripture. So let's read and meditate his word and we will never go wrong. So God bless you all. Thank you for listening in, tuning in, and we'll see you next time. God bless.